Good afternoon, dear participants, and welcome to the final uh, session of today's Live Seed event. Uh, we will have a panel discussion now, and uh, we will do what basically we've done through the Live Seed project with the national workshops. We bring together all the stakeholders involved. So we will have researchers, uh, breeders, seed companies, public authorities, and farmers discussing what are the next steps forward to increase the production and use of uh, organic seeds. So already I want to thank all our participants uh, for joining the panel discussion. Uh, I have a few slides to present you so that we can all be clear on the key recommendations before uh, we enter the discussion. And uh, before that, um, I would like to tell you once again that uh, you can ask questions to a panelist already uh, through the, the Spot Me interface, through the chat, and then we will have a moderator, my colleague Martin, who will select the most pertinent and relevant questions uh, that I will ask uh, to some of the speakers. So if possible, please indicate to which one of our panelists you, uh, you want to ask uh, the question uh, as well. Um, so, um, in this panel, we will discuss the key success factors and recommendations from the Live Seed project. So, please bear with me. I will take five minutes to sum them up. Uh, you've heard about some of them already uh, this morning and, and uh, uh, yesterday's event uh, as well. So, recommendation for national authorities and all stakeholders, it's very important to install national seed expert groups in all countries, if possible, and this expert group should have the key task of uh, um, uh, making a national annex, uh, meaning a list of uh, crops and species for which no derogations are possible anymore. We've identified this as a key uh, tool and, and practice to gradually phase out of the derogations. We have recommendation for research institutes, breeders and seed companies. There should be more cultivar testing trials under organic conditions. Uh, there should be public research projects and breeding programs for organic varieties. Um, and uh, yes, of course, we know historically how public research has had a key role in the development of new varieties. So this is also an important recommendation. And there should be stakeholder networks to make use of synergies in research. For national authorities and seed companies, uh, there should be national targets established to gradually increase the supply of organic seeds for key crops. And it's important to try and involve the whole supply chain to increase production and marketing of organic seeds. It's not only a, a business and a matter for, for breeders, farmers and seed companies, uh, uh, but also processors, retailers, uh, uh, trade companies should be involved uh, in this effort. For seed producers and farmers, it's important that you actively give recommendations to your ministries on how the database should be improved to better fit your needs and your constraints. Uh, then we have more recommendation for certifiers and national authority on the need to communicate on the database towards farmers and seed producers as well and on the importance of using it. Uh, then the national database should be connected to the EU router database and we just had a, a detailed explanation on how uh, this EU router database will work. To national organic associations, please organize workshops and webinars uh, on organic seeds, on the benefits uh, of using organic seeds, on the legislation and the gradual phase out of derogation uh, for the current organic farmers, but also for the upcoming organic farmers. And we do expect that there will be many more organic farmers in the future years indeed. To national authorities and all stakeholders, yes, we said it already and we will say it again, it's very important to develop a clear roadmap towards reaching 100 percent organic plant reproductive material with long-term timetables and specific plans for each crop. For countries which already have a national annex, uh, it's important uh, to find 
ways to establish a structural knowledge exchange among the different countries to, to share best practices, to organize international technical workshops, and to learn from the conventional sector on how to share information on seeds and varieties between countries. So it's a long list of recommendations uh, to discuss. Uh, with us today, we have a distinguished list of panelists and speakers. I will introduce them uh, one by one. Uh, what we will do is that uh, each one of the speakers will have three minutes to answer a question uh, I will ask them. And then uh, once all our panelists have um, made their first uh, uh, intervention, they will have an opportunity to react to some of the other statements. And then we will be able to get questions from you, uh, dear audience, as well. And this will take us to uh, 4.45 uh, as well. Um, so please uh, ask your questions uh, through the Q and A, um, and I think now let me exit uh, the presentation. Uh, I think I can already turn to uh, uh, our first speaker. But uh, before that, uh, may I say that, um, as you know, we uh, the picture is a bit uh, different and we have new prospects for organic farming uh, since last year because the new commission published its green deal um, and as a follow-up to that there was the publication of the biodiversity strategy on the one end and the farm to fork strategy on the other end which aim at reaching europe uh, sustainable food systems in europe by 2030 and as part of the actions envisaged by the commission there is this new European target to reach 25% of organic land by 2030 uh, in Europe. Uh, this is an ambitious objective, but we believe that it is achievable, provided that the right policies are in place, policies to boost the demand of organic food uh, on the one hand, through green public procurement, and for example, mandatory targets for organic products in public canteens at the national level, and policies to boost the production, uh, the organic production as well. Um, and all of this will be accompanied and boosted by a new organic action plan at the European level, which we expect for uh, the early part of 2021. And as part of this action plan, we do also expect that there will be uh, measures uh, to uh, increase the availability of inputs needed uh, for organic production and first of all to increase the production and availability of seeds and of uh, uh, organic breeding as well and ideally we would like such action plans on organic farming to be uh, in all um, member states as well I, I may want to add that uh, we have negotiations on the common agricultural policy as well and uh, this is also relevant for the organic sector and for seed production because uh, the parliament has asked um, through an amendment uh, that in each cap strategic plans at the national level member states should analyze the needs uh, of the organic sector and and the needs to increase the production in under organic farming so this will have implications of course for for the availability of organic seed production so without further ado uh, I would like now to ask to welcome our first panelist and uh, first speakers. First speaker, uh, Mr. Stefan Dressman. <clears throat> welcome, Stefan, and thank you for uh, joining again uh, a live seed uh, workshop. Uh, Stefan works at the Lower Saxony Ministry of Food, Agriculture, and Consumer Protection since 2002. Uh, since then, you have been responsible for organic farming in the ministry. And since 2003, uh, you are also the head of two specialized German groups for organic propagated seeds in the name of all the 16 German federal states. And since 2018, uh, you are the head of unit nutrient management, agro-environmental policy uh, and organic farming in the ministry. So thanks again for joining. And my question to you will be, um, you know, Germany is one of the countries with a national annex, uh, of course, and having followed this workshop, 
and the previous workshop we organized uh, about uh, um, northwestern European countries with a national annex. Uh, how would you see cooperation among these countries uh, to be organized, both at the formal level, let's say, and but also at the informal level, given all your experience in uh, dealing with organic farming and organic regulations? Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Eric, and hello everybody from Germany and from Hannover from the fine weather today in the special times. Um, as you said, I'm uh, coordinating this uh, expert group since 16 years. Uh, and these two expert groups, uh, we decided one is uh, too, too big, and so we split these groups in 2010. And since then, we have one expert groups for vegetable. Uh, crops for vegetable seeds and one for agricultural seeds. We discussed this annex since 2010, 2011, and we decided and we start with this annex 2012. And up to now, we have nearly 30 countries in on the annex, and we hope we can go on this way the next years. You asked me about the cooperation between. Uh, other countries and um, for the history, we start this cooperation, I think 2010 was it, 2011 or before, we had some meetings uh, with the Netherlands, uh, it's a long time ago, it was very good, this uh, meetings in the Netherlands, so we come from Germany to Netherlands, was a good ex exchange, we learned much there and as maybe I hope so also from Germany. But after it, we had not so much time to do it further. And but I, I think the, this next, it must be the next step. Um, for one step, we have the national groups. I think they're very important for the uh, further for the future up to 2035 to get 100 percent um, organic seeds. Um, I think it's also very important to have a roadmap. Um, uh, in the countries, but I think also it's very necessary to have more exchange between the countries. And why is it for, I think, so important? I think we have to learn each other, how the, the ways are in the, in the countries. And I second, I think it's very, very important because we spoke about market, we spoke, we spoke about a market with growth and growth and growth organic, and we spoke about much money. And I think it's very important to speak how we can go together forward because there's really a competitive difference. And farmers ask me why we should go to annex when other countries have not the annex, especially for, for potatoes or so. You ask me how we have to organize it. I think uh, for Germany, it's really a challenge. I counted yesterday we have uh, nine uh, neighbor countries. Um, so we have, I think, one is a question of organizing, and, and here this is this exchange on live seeds today and also one month ago or some months ago. I think it's very good to make it, and it's very easy to, to ex make the exchange about web conferences. It's very easy, and, and I think we can do it very, very fast so we can save much time. And uh, but how, how we, despite this, this uh, workshops on web conferences, how we can do it? Um, maybe for, for from Germany, it's it's good to start with with uh, countries on the western side to, to start with uh, with Netherlands, with Belgium, Luxembourg, France, um, to make a little group uh, with uh, a web conference, maybe one time a year or two times a year. To, to to make a yeah informally exchange how we can together go forward. But I think uh, it needs time. Um, we had not so much time, it needs time. Um, and I think it needs money for, for coordinating for a coordinator. Maybe it's a possibility from the EU to get money for this coordination for, for this group. For this to establish, establish this group and to go for continually forward up to 2035. So that's my little input in this two, three minutes. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, that's very clear. And that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you as well to follow up. I mean, do you see a role for the European Commission in this coordination? But you already answered. So I will save these questions uh, uh, to our guest from the European Commission. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thank you for now. And uh, we'll see you again uh, uh, later. Uh, now I have a pleasure to welcome uh, Pierre Giacometti uh, Bianchi. Uh, Welcome, Pierre. Thank you for joining. Uh, Pierre Giacomo is the scientific coordinator of the seed area of CREA DC, which is the Council for Agriculture Research and Analysis of the Agricultural Economy, which is based in Tuscany, in Italy. Uh, Pierre speaks regularly at national and international conferences, is a lecturer in training courses and author of publications of a scientific and informative nature. So, Pierre, my question to you, um, what are strategies to involve more stakeholders from the bottom uh, from the bottom up to get more supply on seed database? And after two, almost two years of experience with a new organic seed database, who are, in your opinion, the actors that will need to play a more active role to bring about a shift in the use of derogations? And what can be done to engage with them? So, Pierre, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eric. Uh, before to answer to your question, I would like to say that, uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, I will uh, report on the, on the basis of uh, the experience we are having in Italy. Uh, I suppose you call me because I am the manager of the database uh, in Italy and I also coordinate uh, the expert group on SEED. Uh, and, but uh, even though uh, I'm working with the database uh, since uh, 1988, when it was established in Italy, uh, at the time it was uh, voluntary, uh, these are indeed a difficult question to answer. Um, I would say that uh, the original goal was always been, uh, it's always been to match demand with supply on a common platform and uh, to manage the derogation on a fair basis. Uh, this is the goal of the uh, database. Uh, this assumes that the supplier uh, trusts the power of the database as a tool to deliver the seed and the applicant really wish to buy the seed as far as is available. But uh, experience, at least in my country, shows that this is not always the case. And maybe I will say something that uh, it will warm up a little bit the discussion because uh, not everything works well, not everything is, uh, uh, well, maybe it's on the right way, but uh, something to improve uh, is there. Let's see the situation from the viewpoint of a seed company. Uh, at the first stage, a seed company sees a market opportunity. They plan the production, they invest, they produce seed. And uh, we all know that seed production needs uh, programming and time, even using existing variety. And uh, when seed is available, they register the seed on the database, they offer the seed, and they answer to the request of interest by the farmer. Uh, on the other side, the farmer decides which variety intend to use, consults the database, and if the seed of the variety is available, express interest. Then there could be several reasons why the purchase is not finalized. Logistics, price, time for delivery, for example. I ever, however, this may be justification to hide a back reason, which sometimes is that the farmer has already made the decision to purchase seed from a non-organic supplier. The consequence is that the seed could be available but remains in the stock in the seed company. Uh, of course, the situation described is an extreme one, but is not such an isolated case, and uh, create a negative circle and a negative impact on the system. The seed company will produce less quantity of organic seed, seed available on the database will be less and less, and the seed company will look for other market channels if available. The farmer will make use of the database mostly to catch the derogation. I don't think this is by chance that the peak of seed available notified to the database was just before scheduled deadline for the possibility to get derogation. And uh, I recall I was there, the first announcements for, was for 2003. And uh, 
the current regulation postponed it at 2035. Uh, I mean, I, with this, I don't mean that the derogation system is not uh, necessary, but it should be strictly regulated. Coming to your question, how to get out from this negative circle? First of all, I would like to say that uh, the database is just a tool, as other online uh, instrument may be more or less easily misused. Uh, since almost two years, we have a new database, but uh, as I told you, we had uh, 20 years of experience in my country. Uh, this new database uh, better performing and based on the new principle has, uh, has been implemented after the consultation with all the stakeholders. But the main input when preparing uh, this uh, new functionality was simplification. But altogether now we realized that, that uh, uh, we have to better channeling some flexibility allowed by the system. In this process, all the stakeholders should be involved in the decision, and including seed association, farmer organization, representative of the organic association, authorities, and control bodies. And uh, this is what we aim to do. If I can stress a component, the role of the control body is and it will be a key factor in this process. The database is not enough to, to reverse the course observed in the previous year. Anyway, we have already noticed a clear reduction of the number of applications for derogation in 2019, and I'm confident that uh, this trend will be consolidated in 2020. Uh, here in Italy, we recently took the decision to move uh, Lucerne and the Gypsum and Clover to the red list. That for us means uh, no uh, derogation in principle. And this, this decision is based on the potential availability of organic seed. But this decision will be a robust stress test for the database and the system in place. Well, this is my first introduction to that I offer for the discussion. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Pierre, for your controversial statement, so to speak. Uh, but indeed, I mean, these are part of the challenges that many countries face uh, uh, with a database. And, and this is why we identified that it's so important uh, to have a, a strict system to phase out gradually the, the derogations. Indeed, but thank you for the good news that the number of derogations is already uh, going down in Italy, and uh, I'm sure other speakers will want to react on what you said uh, as well. So thank you, Pierre, and uh, see you in a bit. Uh, now I have a pleasure to welcome uh, Judith Feher from uh, Anki in uh, Hungary. Uh, hello, Judith. Thank you for joining. Uh, Judith, I will introduce you. Judith is a biologist with experience in agrobiodiversity management organic breeding, organic seed production, and participatory research. She's involved in national and EU project management and dissemination, such as live seed, of course, but Judith was also involved in farm pride and in diversity food too. And she is a member of Hungarian Gene Bank Council and the scientific leader of Magash, the Hungarian Seed Savers Network. So thank you for joining us again, Judith. And my question to you is about capacity build, building, something we already discussed a bit this morning. Capacity building for farmers can be an important tool to support farmers to use more organic seeds. But what is the role of researchers in this process? Good afternoon, and thank you very much, uh, Eric. Uh, I hope you can hear me, because uh, the connection seems to be quite bad here for me. Um, so, as a researcher and as a research institute, um, in our experience, I can share with you that uh, there are some key uh, factors and uh, some key elements where you can intervene in um, capacity building of farmers and uh, moving forward organic uh, seed use. So, of course, as a researcher, uh, you have an important role in creating new knowledge and also creating new cultivars. Uh, sharing this information and um, being a key, um, having a key role in uh, networking and uh, collaboration 
And uh, also it's important to build trust among uh, the different stakeholders. And uh, based on our experience, um, yeah, research institutes uh, are very important in um, organizing uh, field trials. Um, the most um, well known are uh, organized by or, uh, research institutes are um, these on-farm trials where uh, farmers are directly involved. This is very uh, useful because it also builds uh, trust, as I mentioned, accepting uh, these results. Um, but if there are no official organic uh, smallpox trials in a certain country, uh, research institutes like us, MKI, can also initiate such uh, networks and bring together um, um, all those uh, partners who can contribute. Uh, like research institute, other research institutes, breeders, farmers, and the competent authority uh, to to bring um, the the necessary um, um, things to to establish such a network, like uh, providing field for the trials, equipment, and expertise. Um, and then, uh, of course, beside the farmers uh, who can uh, profit from these uh, trials, we hope that um, the seed producers will be also motivated and will offer uh, sufficient certified organic seeds uh, via the, the organic seed database. Um, then research institutes uh, are playing a key role in the dissemination of um, such a, the results of such trials and also other related experiments. And uh, this dissemination can be done in uh, different ways. Uh, like uh, we do several uh, times a year, organize organic open field days, um, combined with tasting events, uh, where we can show and explain the trials to the farmers. This is also a good opportunity for the farmers to exchange uh, experience among each other. Then, uh, of course, we also organize workshops um, for. Um, for exchange again, and then um, write yearly reports to, to share um, the results of uh, trials and experiments to, uh, for the benefit of the farmers. Uh, and then the breeding, um, being a public or participatory breeding is also um, in the hands of the researchers and breeders. Uh, this is very important to, to provide the, the diversity of the cultivars. Uh, for the farmers and the whole uh, food chain, um, which suit uh, their needs. And uh, last but not least, um, it was mentioned already a few times uh, that the seed expert groups are very important. And uh, in case there is no seed expert group in your country, um, again, a research institute can initiate to establish such a such a group or um, a network of stakeholders and can also participate with uh, expertise and um, and again can also represent the farmers needs in case uh, there is no strong farmers organization in a certain country. So these were my main points. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judith, and Hamki is certainly playing a leading role in the development of organic farming uh, uh, in, in Hungary. And like you mentioned, and like everybody who's been involved in participatory research know, the best way to ensure dissemination is to do co-construction in the first place uh, uh, with the farmers uh, uh, as well. So thank you for highlighting the, the key role of uh, researchers in this, of, in this whole process. And thank you for joining. Unfortunately, you will not be able to stay with us because of technical limitations. But thank you for your contribution uh, uh, as well. Thank you. Thank Judith. you very much and have a good discussion. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. And now I will welcome uh, Joanna Bochewska from uh, Poland. I will introduce you, Joanna, while you're uh, uh, connecting. Hello and welcome. Uh, Joanna uh, works as a trainer, consultant and organizer for agroecology and permaculture in a broad network of collaboration with Nieleni Polska, the food sovereignty movement in Poland, as one of its co-founders and core coordinators since 2016. And uh, last year, she initiated Agro Permalab, a residential 10-day intersectorial training in global agroecology and food governance. She had run her own organic farm between 2014 and 2018, 
um, near Krakow, and uh, Joanna collaborates on seed projects with the National Seed Bank of Poland uh, as well. So thank you again for joining, and my question to you is, with your experience in working together with farmers, what do you think are steps that farmer can take to increase the use of organic seeds? In, in countries with a lack of uh, supply of certified seeds, what is the role of farmers as seed producers as well? So Joanna, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to be part of this discussion and have opportunity to read the, these varied recommendations. I think they are on the large, very well um, addressing the, all of the different scales of uh, collaboration we need to undertake for seed production and specifically organic seed production. Um, my experiences uh, from Poland uh, cannot be said to be representative of uh, all the organic farmer uh, farmer producers, uh, as I'm working more within the agroecological spectrum, so people who are in transition to organics or who are using organic seeds, for example, using natural methods, but uh, are using the pool of uh, organic uh, seed material. Um, so what is the, uh, what is the, uh, what are the steps that farmers can take to increase the use of organic seeds? Um, uh, first of all, uh, it's been already said uh, that this type of multi-stakeholder um, collaboration and discussion on variety, varieties that are well adapted, varieties that are needed, uh, is needed. And for farmers, one of the barriers that could be addressed is how to participate in such research uh, collaboration or um, seed production uh, collaboration that enhances technical skills if they are so atomized and individualized. So unless they are, from my perspective, there is support and active uh, discussion with farmers organizations that can produce a more representative view of what is needed, it will be hard to convey the vo voice of farmers. In Poland, this is a challenge to have the voice of organic farmers being conveyed. And very often I meet that in, uh, in institutional fora, uh, or research for uh, and there's hardly any farmer present to convey even his own voice so I, I really well I'm really glad that here this there is this chance even to say a little bit um, and partly it is because the farmers organizations are not very uh, strong in associating newcomers uh, they are a generation from let's say 19 late 1980s and 1990s and the young generation has not yet associated, or is this very small scale uh, production spectrum? Um, and I would like to uh, respond also uh, to the fact of um, the trust in organic seeds uh, and the quality of organic seeds available in the market. A lot of organic farmers, certified and non certified, who are selling in organic markets, but in a local trust based system. So to cooperatives or on local markets, and they are recognized as organic producers, maybe not certified, but they are recognized. Mm, they, they often buy seeds from abroad. So the question that emerges uh, for me is one, one of raising uh, technical competencies for uh, farmers to be able to uh, uh, produce some section of seeds in their farm, in their farms. Another um, would be um, uh, really to uh, understand where our seeds are coming from in Poland. And for this, uh, a, bit, a bit more thorough research on practices, on where where do uh, organic producers supply, uh, get their supply for seeds, how satisfied they are, what is needed is one part of it, and another is what is the seed produ producer's perspective in Poland. And my concern or my own observation from farmers, from conversations with farmers would be, that, for example, a lot of our organic producers goes abroad, is sold abroad. So if we were to produce organic seeds, also how would we uh, uh, how would we take care of the seed pool remaining and being diversified in Poland? The fact that we have the second largest seed bank in, in Europe, in Poland, I, I, are you able to understand me? Because I'm seeing your making a um, 
attentive grimaces, so I just wanted to check. But the, the fact that we, we our seed bank has made uh, attempts to collaborate in in situ conservation um, uh, trials with farmers has been a good attempt. But at the same time, the number of farms was about 10 or 12 across Poland. So it's a very small pool of farms that taken different varieties and started experimenting with them. So that that's a small, more of a small scale um, perspe farmer's perspective. And I would say that if there were um, some of the recommendations that are made here, uh, even about the training or education processes are, are very, very good. We've just recently done a research with our, uh, with some of our core uh, organic farmers seed savers. And uh, the legal issues are a big challenge in terms of knowing the law, knowing what they can do, uh, how to move with it, even knowing the registration list, etc. And then uh, the technical skills of producing and circulating are uh, also an issue. So thank you very much. That's enough for me. Thank you, Joanna. And I was grimacing, as you said, because I, I lost the connection for a few seconds, but uh, I, I could hear what you said, and uh, you're, you're completely right. I mean, capacity building should be a priority in many countries, so as to, to build the capacity of organic farmers to organize themselves for better institutional representation and a better knowledge exchange uh, as well. And I think you pointed out to the role that farm advisory services could have in, in training and helping the farmers uh, as well. So thank you very much for these perspectives. And uh, now we will turn to uh, uh, seed companies. And I have a pleasure of welcoming Cesar Gonzalez, uh, who is a representative of Euroseeds. Hello, Cesar. Long time no see. And uh, mm -hmm. welcome to the panel. Uh, Cesar Thank joined Euroseeds in September 2018 and is responsible for developing and implementing outreach and advocacy strategy on seed industry related policy and regulatory issues specifically towards the EU institutions, of course, but also towards key agri-food chain organizations. Cesar also works on research and innovation policies and represents Euroseeds in the Plants for the Future technology platform. So, Cesar, uh, obviously seed companies have a key role to play to increase the production of organic seeds. And given the, the increase which is expected also in organic land in the coming uh, decades, um and uh, the increase in percentage of organic seeds needed and used the question is are seed companies prepared for this increase in demand for organic seeds and the demand will have to be met with an adequate supply as well so do you think there is a, a kind of uh, you know chicken and egg uh, situation here and yes how could this be resolved from your perspective so please cesar the floor is yours thanks <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Mm, yeah, uh, responding to to this, uh, can, can shell, um, yeah, I don't think this this really represents reality. I mean, I I understand why uh, why the question, and I I think that it might appear so because yeah, if you look at the figures that were presented during this uh, workshop, fifty percent more or less uh, of the seed it's uh, is a non-chemical treated seed, so still we have 50% to go to to reach the current demand. But I don't think it's a lack of uh, interest from the companies, because if you look at uh, the figures in the past, were much lower and it has been increasing. And actually, the current figures represent the efforts of the companies made some years ago. That being said, I think that more companies have joined and will be joining. That has been also part of the of the discussion these days. And I think also internally in Eurosit, we have uh, reached that conclusion. We see that more companies might be interested and therefore we can expect that uh, the offer or the supply of seeds will increase. Now the question to me and I think for everyone is, will this increase offer mm, meet the, the possible demand or will demand increase much uh, faster than the, the offer? That's a very fair question. And for that, I, I would like to share with you one of the reflections we had in the working group before um, the Green Deal was published. 
And at that time, one year ago, um, I would say that there was kind of confidence in the working group that at the current the growth rate for both organic uh, farming and organic breeding or breeding for organics, um, yeah, the sector feel very much uh, comfortable with uh, actually being able to supply the demand uh, for seeds that uh, the organic sector would would request. Of course, not not uh, tomorrow, not the, the next year, but yeah, in certain years we felt confident on that. Meanwhile, we had this uh, green deal and this new, let's say, objective of 25% of land under organic farming, which poses, I would say, a clear, uh, let's say, <laughs> challenge for the sector. And I think it was Monica Messner who presented the figures or even posted a comment uh, in the chat saying that to reach that goal and to reach from 50 to 100% of, of seeds and the organic seeds, uh, we need to increase by six uh, times the, um, the supply of uh, organic seed. Well, that's, that's a huge challenge for the sector. And the main question remains, once the subsidies or the support for such, uh, to, to achieve such objective uh, will, be, will be withdrawn, will there be a demand that will push the offer? Because in principle, we put only support the market-driven demand, because this is the kind of demand that companies can rely on and can planify their investments in 10 years time or so. So is, will that be a real demand and a real push for organic seeds? That's one of the questions that need to be clarified in order to engage even more companies uh, in breeding for organics. That's one, one of the questions. And then the other that might be, let's say, um, making it even more difficult is to reach that market. And uh, if you compare it to the conventional one, for the conventional, you have one type of seed, more or less, yeah? one type of seed. And you know that this is, these are varieties. While if you go to the organic, we see that there are different developments. So it's a much smaller market then it's divided into different markets, sub-markets. And that will make the life of the companies much more difficult in order to planify their investments, to make their strategic decisions on which type of material to breed. And actually, it will make much more complicated to meet the demand from the farmers and the, the society as a whole. So companies are investing it, are getting in, but yeah, there are some difficulties or challenges that uh, need to be sorted. That's, that's for sure. Thank you, Cesar, for bringing even more questions to the table. Uh, and uh, yes, I think we heard this morning or, or yesterday that uh, a majority of the seed companies surveyed during the live seed project uh, answered positively to uh, uh, the prospect of increasing their offer of organic seed uh, uh, as well. And uh, with a new organic regulation and uh, the, the, the end of derogation foreseen by 2036 on the one hand with the organic target uh, as well, even though it also raises some challenges. Uh, we do believe there is a, you know, a, a clearer indication that the, the growth in organic will, will continue indeed. But uh, uh, indeed, the questions you ask are extremely relevant, but I will let uh, other speakers uh, reply in the second part as well. So thank you for your contribution, Cesar, and talk to you later. And uh, I will now turn to uh, uh, a seed company as well from Vitalis. So uh, I have a pleasure of welcoming Melanie Molnar with us. Hello. Hello, Melanie. Thank you for joining. Uh, so Dr. Molnar is working as community manager for Organic at uh, for Vitalis Organic Seeds, a multi-local breeding company for organic vegetables. In this role, she evaluates trends in organic vegetable markets and is the contact person for organic associations and research institutes for Vitalis in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. She's also a member of a seed expert group for organic vegetables in, in Germany. So uh, uh, it's a bit, I have a bit of a similar question than to Cesar for you. I mean, having seen the, the key success factors and recommendations uh, that uh, have been put forward by the Live Seed project. Where do you see an opportunity for a seed company such as Vitalis? 
Okay, uh, Erica, thank you for uh, for the invitation. And um, it would have been uh, great to meet all of you in person, but now we have to do it uh, remote-wise. Um, I think uh, one of the the biggest success stories um, is, on one hand, the the LiveSeed project because it really um, provided the first European overview. Um, about state of the art, uh, the usage of uh, organic seed, and uh, what uh, would be the next step for uh, for a seed company would um, be the ex the increase of the exchange between countries. Um, because I see uh, the um, uh, the expert group in in Germany, but we also have a look on on the Netherlands and, uh, for example, France, and everyone is doing it a little bit difference but we all have the the same goal in the end to to reach the 100 percent usage of organic seeds by i think now 2036 so the alignment uh, would be the the next step but i think uh, already the the router database um, provides um, a step forward uh, into that direction because it will make it easier for a seed company um, to offer um, seeds on an um, international level because every database is a little bit different. And I think it makes it also easier for um, countries or, or for farmers, which don't have a database yet, um, to have a, an, an easy access to it. Because we heard already uh, in the discussions before that it's quite complicated sometimes for farmers to see if there are organic seeds actually available. And uh, what would be also important, and I think it has also been pointed out a lot uh, in those two days, would be a roadmap also for us as uh, seed suppliers, because we need to adapt to the, to the new situations, also uh, to the Green Deal. I think it will give us a good push forward. Um, but we need to, to plan. And uh, especially uh, biannual crops, um, you cannot produce them from one day to the next. So we, we need some kind of, of guideline. What will be the next steps? Which are the targets? And when do we have to reach those targets? And uh, I think also in the, in the future, what is necessary is uh, a more intense um, cooperation with uh, with the growers, with the organic growers. We already test uh, our candidate material with organic growers um, on their fields to see if they're suitable for uh, organic uh, production or not. Are they resilient enough? But uh, with this cooperation, we always get some feedback also from the growers. What are they doing differently? and um, how uh, do our varieties react and what do we have to to improve so everyone is doing it a little bit differently even if you go from north to south and uh, you have to find something uh, suitable uh, for everyone which leads to a broad range of varieties and you have to adapt to that as well so that's uh, in a nutshell from a seed company thank you very much uh, uh, melanie and it's clear that it's uh, yeah uh, uh, a challenging business because of uh, of a diversity of uh, expectation and needs not only of climate but also of uh, of, uh, of you know what farmers want and need uh, uh, as well and thank you for pointing out you know this cooperation with organic growers so that the varieties can be tested uh, under organic condition uh, as well i'm sure we will come back to these points later so thank you very much for for your contribution for now and now i will turn to uh monica mesmer for uh, another point of view of researchers uh, monica welcome do i really need to introduce you i think everybody knows you uh, by now but uh, still uh, um I will. Uh, you've been leading the plant breeding team uh, at FIBEL, the Research Institute of Organic Agriculture in Switzerland since 2009. You're also the president of the uh, European Consortium for Organic Plant Breeding, ECOPB. You're an eminent member of the IFOAM International Seed Platform, but also the IFOAM Organics Europe uh, Seed Expert Group, of course. And you're engaged in several national and European projects and first of all live seed because you are a scientific coordinator of live seed so monica uh, one question to you 
Uh, Cesar mentioned that you uh, estimated that we will need roughly six times more organic seed production uh, in the medium and long term due to the expected increase in organic land. Uh, who can produce all that seed? Uh, seed companies have a role, uh, uh, of course, but do you see a role for, for farmers as seed producers uh, as well to, to meet this demand? Thank you very much, Eric, for the introduction and uh, and for this important question. Yes, I see if we want to really with, uh, to cover this big demand of six-fold increase in organic seed, we need to join forces, and I think it needs to be involved uh, as well, of course, the seed companies, uh, and but also uh, the farmers, and also I see quite a, a role, important role also from public institutions, like especially in Eastern countries, also, um, economic institutes are involved in seed production. I think that's something that should be in increased. And I think maybe there could be a political shift that they, uh, instead of doing conventional seed production, they have a higher focus on organic seed production to follow also the, the Green Deal call for more organic area. And, uh, and uh, there I see a very clear role of the, of the farmers to doing the seed production. Also, when we talk about seed companies doing um, seed production in many cases the seed production especially if we talk about herbal crops is not done by the seed company themselves by, but by contracting farmers doing this and i think at the moment there's a big challenge to find sufficient organic farmers uh, that uh, are experienced in seed production and there was also a question we had once with a seed company what is easier to um, educate and train and conventional seed producer in organic farming or an organic farmer in seed production and actually to my knowledge since organic system is quite different from organic and you need this three years of uh, conversion period and also you need a lot of knowledge and experience for doing good organic seed production I think it's more important or it's very important to train organic farmers that have a very good management in uh, in organic uh, seed production and I think this for this we need really to do training and capacity building but I think it also need to be supported by certain infrastructure for example for having some drying conditions as this has a big effect on the quality of the part or on the cleaning system and uh, in, in many cases that will be too expensive for an individual farmer so it could be something that is in maybe um, uh, bought by the the govern, government and they uh, rent it to the different farmers that they can use it uh, so that um, uh, or it could be something that is uh, joint uh, jointly owned by a farmers cooperative that all involved in the seed production and, uh, and I think that is a, a big part and there I also see that in the training it would be important to get um, public support for the training. So either by research institutes or by advisors or but also by, by seed companies uh, to do that. And I think it's also important to, to have this um, large increase um, uh, also uh, um, to make sure that, that there's really um, a demand on the market so that like Cesar said is this a real demand or is it just a calculated demand and I think for this it's very important that uh, regulation and with also with the new organic regulation that the implementation is uh, much more stricter than in the past and that the country is not waiting till 2030 till they start to, to do something but that they have to start right now uh, to implement this and to reduce derogation. So I think in my point of view, the first step that we need to do is to get rid of the general derogations. And uh, I think that would also link to the roadmap that we could have a roadmap and there we say, okay, there we have now general derogation and we make a list till uh, 2035 until when which of those species are um, uh, uh, removed. Actually, that, that list need to be removed maybe in the next five years to have the general derogation uh, because then it has to go from the general derogation to specific individual derogations and then at the end uh, to uh, no derogations. And I think that 
only if that uh, implementation is more strict, the seed companies will have the confidence to invest, as it has been said during this workshop. Uh, it happened in the past that the seed companies thought, oh, now there's a law, the organic farmers have to use organic seed, now we invest in organic seed. And they did, uh, and then the farmers uh, asked for derogations, and at the end there were a lot of derogations, and the seed companies had a stock of organic seed that they couldn't sell. And then, of course, they, they stopped this production. I think this we have to really to prevent because now with live seed, we make a big hype that there is a big demand, but we have to make sure that this is not counteracted by a very lax uh, regulation. So, so what I would propose is that uh, there should be even for a uh, very clear roadmap, and then there should also be even for, um, for those uh, cultivars or crops where we have a single derogation, there should all be ready be a minimum where it said, okay, uh, in year 2021, you have to have, each farmer have to have at least 20% uh, of organic seed, uh, and then the rest could be uh, uncertified, uh, could be untreated uh, conventional seed, but that this uh, really uh, goes on the farm level, not on the general level of the country where we say, okay, we improve it slowly because then the, the, the more uh, pioneering organic farmers will do that. We also seen in the farmer survey that mainly the, the farmers that do have short value chains or do direct sales, they are much more uh, using much more organic seed compared to those bigger uh, organic farms that are producing for the long value chain. And so the value chain, I think, could also play a major role in setting these limits that a, a certain amount has to be organic and that need to be controlled by the certification bodies so that that it's that they have to look on the farm what percentage of seed comes from organic and what comes from non-organic and that uh, I think that is uh, quite important and also for, for motivating farmers and um, having them to invest uh, and, and getting the knowledge and infrastructure to produce organic seed. I think it also would need um, uh, support, like having subsidies for the organic seed producers. Uh, uh, and uh, maybe also there uh, need to be a system that is not at the moment promoting non-conventional seed because of a farmer side of you, if he can get both uh, organic and non-organic seed, but the non-organic seed is uh, much cheaper because the challenge of production is lower. Uh, and then of course, for him, it's also attractive to find several reasons why he need to use the cultivar that is produced from, from the non-organic seed. And I think that there needs to be really very strict regulations. And I think this uh, equivalence cultivars could be a, a good way to avoid this, that you say, okay, I need exactly this cultivar, but uh, that then the authorities could argue, but there are other cultivars that fulfill the same purpose for the same use, and you could use that where you have organic seed available. Okay, thank you very much, Monica, for these additional recommendations and, and uh, ideas. And uh, thank you for stressing as well the, the need for a stricter implementation of, of the regulation. Uh, I'm sure we'll come back to that, but uh, please let me now uh, uh, welcome uh, Patricia Pitten uh, from the European Commission. Good afternoon, Patricia, and thank you for joining again a Live Seed Workshop. Uh, as well, I will first uh, uh, introduce you. Uh, Patricia is an agronomist, graduated from the University of Torino in Italy, and uh, as officer for the region Piemonte, she already had experience in organic farming and IPM and other agro-environmental measures dating back from the early 90s. But uh, Patricia joined the European Commission in 2001 as inspector at the Food and Venturini Office, and then from 2005 to 2018, she worked as a policy officer in the unit pesticides and biocides at DG Sante, we will focus on plant protection products and the sustainable use of pesticides. But in 2018, she joined DG Agri um, uh, in the organic uh, uh, agriculture unit uh, uh, dealing with the organic uh, uh, regulation. And so, Patricia, yesterday uh, you gave us a, a quite detailed overview of all the ongoing work of the European Commission uh, with the member states on the secondary legislation related to seeds uh, in the organic 
uh, regulation uh, as well. <coughs> so uh, today I want to ask you, I mean, I, of course you've had a look at the key success factors and recommendation uh, offered by the LifeSeed project. So who do, how does TG Agriculture uh, contribute to establishing a regulatory framework in which production and and uh, and use of organic can fry i mean you you already answered to that partly yesterday so if you want please uh and, and time is running out as well feel free to also react on some of the other statements uh, which were made yeah. <clears throat> thank you can you can you hear me it's okay yeah i hope that you can hear me yeah I'm not so sure. Okay, ah, I see that you can hear me. Perfect. Yes, in fact, already yesterday, I um, thank you again for the invitation, first of all, and uh, and to the audience for the question, for the for the outcomes, uh, very well uh, expressed and presented. Uh, and uh, I wanted just to again to stress that we are, as you know, as I already said yesterday, we are working now with our um, highest priority to the finalization of the secondary legislation for the proper implementation of the uh, regulation on organic uh, that will uh, finally be applicable from January 2022. And also to uh, address uh, some of the um, um, points that have been expressed uh, by the other panelists, uh, I think that already with the delegated act and implementing act that we have presented, in a sense, we are going, we are going in the direction that is, uh, uh, that was uh, stressed uh, as necessary to have more transparency, more, more knowledge uh, and more control of what is really going on in terms of derogation, in terms of availability of, uh, or not not only organic, but uh, in conversion as well. As this is a, another important uh, aspect of the new uh, regulation that in future there will be a possibility also to promote in conversion plant reproductive material. And therefore, it is important that we indeed uh, then ensure also, that, as was stressed by uh, Dr. Bianchi, a proper uh, um, control of the traceability of all the, the material that is produced and is uh, certified or not, in any case, is labeled with the, the reference to organic or in conversion. And I think that already, in fact, what I was saying, for example, the introduction uh, is important, the introduction also of the list of uh, positive crops on which uh, member states will not uh, um, derogate. Uh, this absolutely is a must that, uh, um, as already stressed by, by the expert, will uh, allow also more uh, certainty for the seed supplier in terms of uh, uh, knowledge for future investment. So we, I think that already with the secondary uh, legislation that is currently in the pipeline and uh, one of the act will be, we are happy to, to, to say that it will be, um, one is already being uh, adopted and published and the other is going to be published uh, in December. And I think that with this new provision, we will uh, further have uh, tools uh, to uh, improve. And uh, as well with respect to the, to the um, transparency, the Commission uh, has taken a, a commitment to public all the uh, report that we will get also from uh, the data that we, we will collect from the member state in terms of availability and derogation in future. So this can also be important, not only uh, for, for, uh, for the transparency and knowledge sharing, but as well for us all to monitor the progress in the coming years. Then, with respect to the uh, other uh, regulatory important, more technical, more scientifically technical aspect on the organic breeding or organic heterogeneous material, I will let this part to be addressed by Tom so, later. But uh, I would still uh, bring the attention, in fact, to the fact that being the uh, plant reproductive material in the scope, full in the scope of the organic, uh, to reassure Dr. Bianchi, this will have to be indeed um, compliant with all the data requirements requirements for the organic production with the certification system and with the control body system as well. And then I, for uh, there was uh, the interesting um, um, 
recommendation in terms of coordination, in terms of coordination of expert uh, group at uh, national level. And there, I think the panel of this morning, uh, the panel that was indeed the colleague dealing with the European Innovation Partnership and Research and Innovation, there, the bottom-up participatory approach is fundamental. There are several different possibilities in terms of organic group, operational group <laughs> that can be built up, the network among the member states. Therefore, I am sure that it's, on, it's really a question to find the right uh, tools, but also important to have the willingness from the member state, absolutely. And we will do our best also to promote this, as we have already done also in terms of European router database for the future uh, with the with the member state and then the, still I would like to um, indeed also with respect to the training we are well aware that the necessity to um, work more with the training we have already our scheme with the um, with the training for the better uh, training for safer food and so on also for organic we can even foresee something specifically even for the sector in future with this tool so that is not to to be um, to be forgotten. And then I would say we are working on the action plan. You know, you can still contribute by these last days. Please do it. We are, we are, I am collecting all the, thank you for all the idea and the contribution. And, but I can't now say what will be there because you know, there is a long consultation, not only public, but as well internal in the commission. But we, we really, you know, perfectly, as already said, it's a, one of the objective, more important objective of the Green Deal. Therefore, we will work uh, all together to achieve this. Eh? And I think that uh, there are several, several new po positive, uh, positive outcomes coming from also from this, uh, from this um, interesting conference. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Patricia. And, um, and uh, from what I understand, you, you, already started replying to to the question on on the you know other possibilities uh for the commission to take a, a leading role in coordinating exchanges uh, uh between different countries uh, as well if i understood correctly you said you know the possibilities are there it's about finding the right tool for that right uh yeah, I can't. I can't commit because it's it's now. I am working in the unit organics, and therefore, this type of of coordination is not um, that we have to to see in which way this can be. Yeah, but it's not that I can commit saying the commission will take this. From our side, we are already with the, with the member state. We work mainly with member states and to find with member states the uh, way to uh, promote this and to push further. We are already doing what in this sense. And then, indeed, there will be the temporary experiment on the other side in terms of a technical uh, um, approach to the new breeding for the organic varieties. And therefore, and we will follow this uh, strictly with the, the colleague will further add in this sense. Okay, thank you uh, uh, once again, Patricia. And uh, now I will turn to your colleague from the European Commission but uh, from DJ Sante, uh, Thomas Weber. Uh, hello, hello, Thomas. Thank you hello. Well for joining You're again. Welcome. And, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for acknowledging already yesterday uh, the, you know, uh, uh, that the, the result of a live seed project uh, uh, were uh, uh, fully taken into account already in all your work preparing uh, the secondary legislation uh, as well. So, uh, Thomas, you're policy officer in the plant health unit in Digicente, in Digicente and uh, you work, among other things, on the seed chapters of a new organic uh, uh, regulation. And also yesterday you gave uh, uh, in detail, you know, um, uh, an overview of the progress on the Organic heterogeneous Material uh, Delegated Act, but uh, uh, also about the prospects for the temporary uh, experiment on organic varieties uh, as well. So, but maybe you could also um, uh, tell us again where you see the contribution of the Commission in, in all the recommendations that were put forward. And uh, please also do react to some of our statements if you want to. Yes, if, um, if I can. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I think, uh, well, I think DG Santa with uh, our responsibility for the seed marketing legislation 
it's actually quite uh, potentially quite crucial, maybe often a bit uh, overlooked uh, in in some uh, in some sectors. Uh, so concretely, of course, it's uh, what we uh, what you already mentioned. Uh, so in the context of the of our seed legislation, we are preparing this temporary experiment on uh, organic varieties suitable for organic uh, cultivation. I think this is uh, one of the most uh, yeah, critical uh, uh, contributions uh, we we can we can make. Uh, it uh, it really addresses crucial issues uh, for actually the ability of, of the breeding sector uh, being able to to provide uh, varieties uh, uh, appropriate for a large sector of, of organic farmers. So we are we are looking at uh, specific uh, testing regimes, uh, also DOS uh, and uh, VCU, so perform performance testing and uh, well I I hope uh, it will run over seven years but uh, that's the maximum of course uh, and uh, I hope that uh, we do our best that uh, we use uh, the time from the start of the experiment as efficiently as possible so that uh, we can see from the beginning uh, how uh, how things are going so this uh, this is really a crucial crucial uh, uh, part of our our work in that respect well secondly uh, you might be aware we have been requested by council to uh, submit a study on the options to update the uh, seed marketing uh, legislation so we are currently working on that together with a contractor and uh, so we will built on what was done before to what we see is still valid. And of course, we uh, we will address uh, the issues which uh, which we did not uh, sufficiently consider in the pre previous attempt. And we, of course, have to take into account uh, complete new policy frameworks like, uh, of course, the Green Deal and uh, Farm to Fork strategy. So, so this gives us the the opportunity to to adapt the entire uh, legislative framework uh, uh, much better to 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 the needs of of different sectors, including the organic sector. So this this is uh, indeed uh, it's also a bit more long term, but uh, we uh, we are working on that, and I think some of you have also been consulted in in the meantime. We, we actually can also uh, work on uh, on the level of implementation of existing rules. So, so for example, DG Sante and our unit, we are the, the parent DG of the Community Plant Variety Office, who, which is working on uh, uh, testing protocols. So, of course, mostly for their mandate is for plant variety rights, but the same protocols are used for registration. And... Uh, we, of course, observe the development. We we look how issues of uh, the diversity of uh, uniformity of, of varieties are addressed in uh, in the uh, in the protocols while respecting, of course, their the role they are playing. So this this issue uh, we we do and uh, yes. So I think we have actually quite a lot on the plate uh, uh, to do. It's uh, we hope that we can, yes, really contribute. I think it's a bit more long term than uh, 25, 26 uh, to uh, to the ability of breeders to provide uh, varieties uh, which are useful for for the organic farmers. But uh, maybe there is really a good uh, prospect for the 2030s. <laughs> I would say, of course, given the timelines, the breeding. Uh, sector is, uh, is is working with, so in that respect, I I would be quite quite optimistic. So, yes, thank you very much, Thomas. And be uh, reassured, uh, I think nobody here is uh, is uh, downplaying uh, the importance of the work of Digit Sante. Uh, uh, 
on these issues. And, uh, and we do really hope that as many member states as possible will indeed participate also to the temporary experiments on uh, organic uh, plant breeding as well. So thank you for that. And uh, now I think uh, we still have a bit of time for, for questions. So maybe uh, the studio can bring back all the panelists uh, on screen. Um, and um, maybe I would just ask uh, for, for, for volunteers to make an additional contribution or to react to one another uh, statements or to tell us uh, how, you know, the, 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 the stakeholders, so to speak, you represent could contribute to this elaboration of roadmap. I mean, we've heard time and again that it's important to have a plan and uh, and to collectively discuss and, and agree on the ways forward. That's what the national level for specific crop uh, uh, on how derogations will be phased out on the one end and how the um, production of organic seeds will, will be increased uh, uh, too. So um, maybe who will I pick first? Maybe, Stefan, uh, are there points that you want to add in relation to what was said by uh, some of the other speakers? Shall I start? Yes. Okay, I try it. Um, I just thought about it, how long we need in the last years. So 2004, we had a specification for the starter base. So it needs yeah, 16 years up to now. And I think we have to, to think about it where we are now. So I think in this in this speed we cannot reach the, the goal of the aim of 2035. We have to go faster, I think. I don't know if you agree, but I think Monica and, and Melanie, I agree totally what you said. I think that's our experience over the last 10, 15, 20 years. So my conclusion is we have to go faster and we see and it's a really fantastic again from this live seed project where we are now in Europe from the 27, 28 countries. So we have to see that we have really different, I will see it, levels or speeds in Europe. And I think on this ground, we have to see that I think every country have to make a roadmap how they will reach 2035 with 100% organic seeds. We have to, to remember what happens maybe for conventional animals. They have to change since long time in organic regulation. You have to need um, organic animals or for organic and for conventional feed, you have to use organic feed. But I'm now so long in the sector and I see in the regulation, it's, it's clear they have, a norm, normally they have uh, a year where, where we have reached this. But we, in the last 10 years also, we see with organic animals, with organic feed, mostly, the country said, no, we are not so far and we have to need much more time. And I hope from this experience, we have to, to recognize, we have to go faster for this organic seed. And so again, I think it will be really good as every country will have an own roadmap with a different speed, but with a goal 2035 maybe to, uh, to make it in the next two, three years. And then I think, I said before, and in my, my first statement, um, it will be good to, to change it between the countries from the neighbor countries. But it, I think it will be also good from the European Commission to see on this process, to ask how, how, <coughs> how fast you are, where are you? So maybe every three years on which 
side in which steps you have made. Okay. So, and, and at last, and we didn't, sorry, one last sentence to it. I think it's also good to see or to, to ask a little bit what happens outside of the European Union. I think there's also a big market and we get much products from, from outside. And also there, I think it must be a question, you say organic seeds or not. So that's my last <laughs> sentence. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Stefan. And you're right. You know, you a lot of experience and precisely the Life Seed project was about bringing, you know, lessons from what we did in the past to do better in the near future as well. So yeah. thank you for your proposals and, uh, and, uh, and stressing again the need for clear roadmaps uh, at the national level. Um, uh, uh, Pierre, has asked for the floor. Pierre, please. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, the roadmap has been mentioned, and so I, I like to um, say that uh, I found the roadmap uh, uh, that I see in the recommendation very useful uh, to be implemented, and uh, I would just like to inform that uh, 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 Italy we will make use of it within the so-called uh, uh, seed action plan, national seed action plan, that it will be soon uh, launched. Uh, under the umbrella of the Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, we uh, plan to have uh, uh, several aspects within uh, this uh, plan, uh, either on a political level, either on uh, the organization, organizational level, and also technical and scientific, in order to have something like uh, a seed policy, organic seed policy for the nation, for our country. And, uh, and uh, of course, all the stakeholders will be involved in the definition of uh, the case of uh, action in this, uh, in this plan. And uh, we hope that uh, it will be useful to have uh, a common understanding, a common direction for our country in uh, organic seed. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. And um, yeah, it's clear that the level of prioritization for developing organic has increased. And uh, with, with a cap strategic plans, uh, ideally we need to have national organic action plans as well, and, and the roadmap for, for seed production uh, could be part of it uh, uh, as well. Thank you very much. Um, maybe I will address these questions to, to uh, uh, Cesar and, and Melanie as well, to, to get your perspective as, as seed companies. Uh, maybe Melanie first and then Cesar. Um. I think the the idea of uh, national roadmaps is uh, is a very good one uh, because we don't have the same approaches in all countries. So I think if we will come up now with a top-down solution, it will not fit. And uh, I think this is something that has to to come bottom up. But um, uh, what I've what I've seen in, in the last uh, discussions, and I've been in uh, the vegetable expert group now for uh, five years, and I think uh, Stefan will agree with me. We discuss a lot, and we uh, have sometimes uh, difficulties to to make uh, steps forward. I think we we really have to to focus on on 2035 and say, okay, this is our goal, and how do we get to there? And um, really um, to, to agree that we all want to, to end up with 100% organic seeds, also from, from growers, but also from supplier side. I think that's an agreement we, we have to make uh, in, in the first place. Uh, thank you, Melanie. Cesar, what about your perspective? Will the roadmap help? Is it, is it going to be enough? Yeah, well, I, I remember when I used to work in, in the Regional Ministry of Agriculture in, in one region in, in Spain, I remember that there was a national action plan for organic farming and a regional action plan for organic farming. So I don't think this is a new concept and for sure it will help. That's, to me, that's clear. But I, I would be very cautious <laughs> with that because we are talking about a huge increase and I'm not so sure that there will be such demand. That's that's why I was mentioning it in the in my previous statement. Um, I I keep in mind that uh, all the efforts that the, the EU will put into it 
are, are let's say, uh, in a timeline of seven years when the multi-annual financial framework is uh, based. Well, seven years means that uh, the efforts that are made today will only have a result in seven years when the new varieties, hopefully, even then, but seven years will be there. Well, when that time passes and all this effort that they put into it, will this effort be sustained? So will this, will there be a demand that doesn't need an extra help to, to pull the, the production of seed or will only be subsidies and then when, once it's gone, it's gone. And the companies, what will they do with all that investment? So these kind of reflections need to be included in the, in the action plan and in the national action plans as well. But for sure, this will help. No, thank you, Cesar. I think these are important points, you know. Uh, action plan should not be about, you know, only list of good intentions. You need to have very clear objectives and review mechanisms and, and uh, uh, monitor regularly, you know, where you are at with the implementation of the specific actions that you listed so as to adapt as well to the situation and in case, you know, the demand is not there uh, as well. So uh, you're right, these are important points to include from the start in a roadmap and in an action plan uh, as well. So thank you for that. Uh, maybe a question to you, Joanna, as well, because we, we've heard that, you know, in, in, a, in a country like, like Poland, where farmer, organic farming organizations are not so well developed or, or, or organized, uh, I mean, do, do you see the possibility to, to have a broad stakeholders involvement to come up with such a clear roadmap, for example, for organic seed production? Um, quite, um, quite on the contrary, I think, I, I think it will, it will be in, important to understand the realities of farmers in terms of economic transition to seed production and involvement in determination of seed uh, technologies. But actually, uh, it sounds by uh, listening to all of you how far it's advanced and looking at the live seed project. And just realizing that uh, the entire live seed project has not been communicated in Poland to our um, network, uh, who are involved in those topics. Um, my impression is that uh, it's more the intermediaries, uh, both researchers and community organizer, organizers and firm and co like uh, social enterprises that would maybe existing uh, seed companies that will play more of a role right now because the pool of farmers in Poland who could benefit from seed production feeding into the entire system is very big. The issue is uh, the e economic incentivizing and showing the economic model, technical skills and um, and just teaching a little different culture of collaboration with the seed companies, I think, so that it's on the on the equal footing because it's easy to uh, turn uh, farmers into seed producers on contracts, but it's a little bit different to empower them with that as well. Uh, so that would be my concern. And um, yes, uh, I, it's very inspiring. It would be great to have a little more technical um, and organizational collaboration. Uh, but I haven't, as I looked at the results, I have not been aware of the okay. uh, seed group by the uh, Organic Farming Coalition. So it's a matter of communication as well, how far it reaches and uh, how well we, we can collaborate, I think, in, yes. in involving our stakeholders. Yes. You're right, very important point. And it's true that the situation is very different from country to, to country as well. So thank you once again for this contribution. We are running a bit out of time. Uh, but I want to, to still give uh, 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 Monica, Patricia and, and Thomas the opportunity for a last word, but please be quite quick as we will have uh, 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 Mike after. Monica, do you want to add something very quickly? Um, yes, I uh, would like to add that we, um, besides the roadmap, we also need to have a controlling of this and this control should be within the country, but also on the European level, because otherwise there is a good intention, but nothing will happen and everybody will think, OK, 2036 is a long time ago. If you, if you think about seed and if you really want to do it, and even if you talk about biannual crops, 
uh, it should be able to do it within five years, technically speaking. But it's it's really the, the part to find this common willingness to do this, to communicate also among farmers why they should use organic seed and why the organic system only makes sense if you start from the beginning with organic, because otherwise you don't have a closed cycle of organic. And I, I think it also really needs this... Uh, uh, this financial incentives for those who are using uh, organic seed or maybe the financial punishment for those who are not using organic seed. Thank you, Monica. So we need the bottom-up approach and participatory processes on the one end, but uh, strict uh, control of the implementation uh, 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 on the other end. Um, yes, uh, maybe Thomas, first, uh, uh, a last okay. word. On yeah. that? Um, um, yes, I just want to take up what uh, maybe uh, Monica alluded to. So it's, uh, I think that's outside our uh, direct influence, of course, on DG Santa, but the, I think the economic framework uh, is, is very important. And I'm, I'm concerned about the viability of, of, uh, of, of organic breeding. So the financing of organic breeding, I know it has been addressed a lot, but uh, <clears throat> I see this as really a crucial, crucial aspect how to to really enable uh, uh, the the breeding of organic varieties, we we can put in place uh, an appropriate regulatory system, uh, but uh, the economics of, of the actual breeding is is, uh, is really extremely important. Uh, also, of course, medium term and long term. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Thomas and Patricia. <laughs> You have, you have one addition to make? Yes, so to, but uh, for, yeah, from my side, if I, I just, I, again, I have, uh, I take note of uh, several uh, interesting um, suggestions that uh, on which we have not yet worked and we'll, we will reflect on these as well in the, also working in, on our organic action plan, therefore, and we will uh, continue to work with the member state because of the member state that finally have the responsibility to also to implement and to do in fact the, the plan in a most integrated uh, way to achieve this objective. Therefore, we will do uh, all the possible to indeed promote this as well. At the level of member state and to assure Monica in the sense of for the control uh, of the of the progress with the implementation was, as I said yesterday, it's our one of our objective to indeed uh, to create a platform to be able to collect the information in a in efficient way you know, and, and re to recuperate hopefully what, what we have missed in this past years because indeed I think is an area that should uh, we have, on which we have to recuperate. Agree. Uh, thank you very much, Patricia, and uh, let me take this opportunity to thank again the European Commission and the uh, Member States, expert and national authorities for all the hard work and intense reflection which is going into the uh, preparation of a secondary legislation on the organic regulation. Uh, thank you all the panelists for your participation. Uh, please leave the studio now uh, because I will give the floor to uh, Michael Reichmaker, who has coordinated the, the policy work of the LiveSeed project uh for more thank yous as well thank you thanks Thank mike are you with us um so why mike uh, is uh, supposed to join us for for uh, uh a few thank you. Uh, I would like to thank you all once again for your participation. We had the live seat final event yesterday, but we had this uh, European policy workshop uh, today as well. And uh, you will hear more uh, from uh, the live seat project because more results are going to be published uh, in the next months. I, I think the project has been uh, uh, pretty much outstanding in terms of results and, uh, and policy relevance. Uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, yes, thank you very much uh, uh, once again uh, uh, for making it possible, uh, all of you. But Maker, you have more thank yous, I think. Yes. Um, thank you for this uh, opportunity to thank all the stakeholders that have contributed in the uh, past uh, years uh, to improve the situation on organic seed 
and uh, use and production in their country. Um, and I want to especially thank all the Leipzig uh, national partners for their hospitality uh, during the national visits and the workshops. And uh, I want to share uh, with you some, um, some of our experiences there, because we did not only learn a lot about uh, seed, but also about culture and uh, the cultural diversity that we still have um, within Europe, luckily. Um, in the southern European countries, for instance, uh, we were constantly, when we visited there, uh, reminded of the fact that the seed is the basis of our food and that good food ne needs time and place. Um, the Italian partners, for instance, they would not mind to uh, work in the evening, but they also insisted to have a lunch break for at least an hour and a half. And I remember when we visited the Ministry of Agriculture in Greece, that there was so much uh, delicious food on the table that we had no room left for our papers or laptops. And also in Spain, uh, when we organized a workshop there, uh, we uh, suggested to uh, start at uh, nine in the morning and the national partners just refused. They said, you cannot have a workshop uh, without a proper breakfast. So finally we decided to start at 10. We had some more fun, uh, for instance, in uh, Hungary, um, where we went together with the people from Umki to one of the uh, seed supplies associations to find out more about uh, the members um, that were producing also organic seed. But uh, unfortunately, the person we met did not have a clue. So we had a long list of questions, um, but he could not answer any of that. But he was very polite and he offered us coffee several times. And um, in the meantime, he played with our business cards. So it was awkward, but also um, a nice experience. In Bulgaria, uh, we went straight from the airport to a meeting with seed producers and researchers. And when we entered the room, there was already a lively debate going on. We settled ourselves, we started our PowerPoint presentations, but they kept talking. So we really had to make some noise uh, to draw their attention. And later we learned that this was because uh, those stakeholders met for the first time. And they were gra very grateful that we uh, offered them this opportunity. And this experience showed me that providing a platform for stakeholders to meet was just as important as the content of our meetings. And that's why I'm also very pleased with the progress that has been made in different uh, countries, uh, which was presented today. In several countries, seed expert groups have been initiated, established or improved. And in other countries, online platforms have been created where farmers and seed suppliers can meet and exchange information. That is why I'm very confident that the progress already made in, your, in the, those countries in the previous period will continue also after the live seed project has ended. So thank you all for your enthusiasm and dedication to this topic and for the to uh, progress that you made. I hope you keep up the good work. Um, I don't. I didn't prepare uh, any closing remarks to, 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 uh, regarding this uh, panel discussion, but I, now I have the floor, I could say a few words. Uh, also, thank all the, I want to thank all the panelists for their constructive contribution to this discussion. And I'm very pleased to hear that there is so much uh, consensus on uh, the, the actions that are needed, the roadmap, uh, but also uh, joint forces between uh, seed producers, uh, research institutes and farmers to uh, reach the goal. And uh, although there's still a work, a lot of work to uh, be done, and I agree that we have to speed up, um, I think uh, meetings like today also contribute um, to, to feel the sense of urgency. And I hope that uh, in the near future, many new companies will enter the organic market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Micah, for sharing these memories, which are also about the, you know, 
the beauties and, and pleasures of working together across uh, such different countries to to build the European Union uh, uh, as well. I think it's it's also important for us to to remind this in such uh, a time. So thank you for that. And likewise, people like to remind us uh, the the road and the path we're taking and the travel itself is uh, almost as important as the destination we're trying to reach. So thank you for sharing uh, once again these, these memories of, uh, of these uh, national workshops as well. Uh, with that, I would like to close this session and this workshop uh, today. Thank you very much uh, to all of you for participating. And uh, as I said before, uh, stay tuned because you will hear more about LiveSeed and about the, the results and uh, uh, about similar uh, uh, projects which will uh, continue uh, to increase uh, organic seed and organic plant breeding as well. So thank you very much and I wish you a very nice evening until next time.